I'd like to introduce to you Neil Vidmar, who is the Russell M. Robinson II Professor of Law at Duke Law School. Professor Vidmar joined the Duke faculty on a permanent basis in 1989 and was awarded the Distinguished Professorship in Law in 1996. Prior to studying law, he studied social psychology and he holds a cross appointment uh, with the Duke Department of Psychology. Professor Vidmar's research covers a range of topics relating to the empirical study of law. He has written numerous articles and books on criminal and civil juries, and he is currently writing on medical malpractice litigation, punitive damages, and eyewitness identification. Additionally, he is completing a new book on American juries. Professor Vidmar teaches courses on social science evidence in law, negotiation, medical malpractice, juries, and the psychology of the litigation process. He is here today to discuss theory, data, and ecological validity, and we're thrilled to have him. It's Saturday afternoon, you've sat here all day, and I'll try to be brief with my remarks. Uh, one, of, one of the perspectives I guess I can give is that uh, this July I will have been practicing law professoring without a license for, for 20 years. Uh, so often my colleagues in psychology accuse me of, of thinking, like a, uh, uh, thinking like a lawyer rather than as a social psychologist, and to a degree that's true because what has happened in, in the years uh, is that I've shifted more to always looking at what are the policy issues. And so there, there are a couple, of, a couple of things. The title of this, this session is called Bringing Social Psychology to Law, but I also want to try to look and bring law to social psychology. And in fact, some of the comments this morning made by Professor Minow and uh, Professor Ogletree and, and uh, uh, Professor Kennedy and John Jost, I mean, just uh, and, uh, Professor Mack, a number of them have raised these law-type questions about the, the, the research. Uh, also, what I want to talk about in a way is situationism. Uh, with the point, and I keep talking about ecological validity, and I'll turn to that in a moment, uh, when I mean ecological validity, what I'm really talking about is the complex setting in which so many legal processes uh, uh, are developed. The other thing I want to do is apologize in a way, because often, I, in fact, I was sort of having a focus when I was writing my comments on law and human behavior, which is the ma one of the major journals in the field, in which there is a very strong focus on heavily on experimental research. And in fact, today, uh, I, I found these papers just wonderful uh, today and very, and not, not just because they were there, but because I think I learned a, a, a great deal. But you'll have to forgive me then because I'm sort of like, not on point because I thought so many of the papers actually do discuss some of the criticisms that, uh, uh, or at least are uh, immune to the criticisms that I'm going to, to level, but let me do it anyway because I've got my slides prepared. <laughs> uh, what do these people have in common? Stanley, for those of you who are social psychologists at least, or have had that background, Stanley Schachter, General George Patton, Charles Darwin, well, maybe General Patton isn't one of them, but I'll, I'll turn to that uh, uh, shortly. The focus that I'm going to have is mostly on the civil jury, but I want to say to you that it applies to jury research toward criminal juries, and that topic came up quite a few times this morning. But also, in addition, it also is applying to the process, the procedures, to which the law goes through. But I, my focus is going to be mostly on the civil jury in terms of the examples, mostly because that's, as has already been mentioned, we have a book that's coming out, although it's both criminal and civil juries, and I've been focusing a lot on, on uh, civil juries. And part of this is, as I will show you, I was part of the Arizona Jury Project in which uh, they instituted some reforms, and I need to give you this background, that were very controversial, allowing jurors to talk about the evidence while the trial was going on. And as you know, that's a no-no everywhere. Well, we were allowed to, because it was so controversial, the Supreme Court of Arizona, uh, and actually due to a courageous judge, Mike Brown, convinced them that we should be able to videotape the actual deliberations of civil juries. And this project ended up with 50 civil juries in which we videotaped the whole trial and in which we, 
we uh, uh, then videotaped the, the jurors when they were deliberating, also when they were discussing it during the time. All, and I can't show you those tapes, I'd love to show you, but that was one of the conditions is that we could look at it, my students could look at it, but we couldn't. But in fact, I, can actually, I do have a couple of excerpts here that I can give you from the transcripts that give you some sort of a feel for, for the kinds of issues I want to develop. Uh, now, one of the things social psychologists talk about is internal validity, external validity, and I'm going to turn to uh, ecological validity, but for those of you who are, are non-social psychologists but who look at this, internal validity means the cause and effect relationship. So you design studies, and we talked about this throughout today, or other people were talking about them, with regard to control groups and the like. All right, so that you can say, if you've got an effect, does X cause Y? And we talk about internal validity. But then there's always the question when you run a laboratory experiment, how much can you generalize? Uh, and we call that external validity. So you replicate in different places, in different situations, and that is referring to the robustness of the phenomenon. Now, lots of times in social psychology, it stops right there that external validity, being able to replicate, is actually uh, um, assumed to have ecological validity. In fact, I've thrown up a couple of terms up there that Gordon Bermont a number of years ago talked about structural verisimilitude. Uh, other people have used the term uh, uh, mundane realism and other people have used ecological validity and in fact I'm taking from Marilyn Brewer's uh, article in the Handbook of Research in Psychology in which she says the question of whether an effect holds up across a wide variety of people or settings is somewhat different than asking whether the effect is representative of what happens in everyday life. This is the essence of ecological validity. Representativeness is not the same thing as robustness. Uh, generalizability, and in this sense, asks whether an effect can occur across different settings and people. Ecological validity asks whether it is uh, a finding a set of findings and it does occur in the real world. And sometimes there's a big gap because a lot of my colleagues, if you think about a continuum, and there is some research in which they look at the laboratory studies from the highly artificial up to some that are a little bit more complex, they stop and say, well, look, we've got this gradual, you know, they all seem to fall together, the artificial studies, but if along a continuum, they're way down here sometimes compared to what the real world has to, uh, uh, has to deal with. And so what I want to do, and, and people know this too much who are in law school, but I, I had this as part of my slide, the trial structure has voir dire, judicial instructions, opening statements, plaintiff and prosecutor and defendants, opening statements, the witnesses are called and cross-examined, and then the defense calls, so throughout this, the judge makes evidentiary rulings, you have experts that are involved, uh, there are closing arguments, judicial instructions of the jury, there's deliberations, criminal trials, they decide guilt and it's separate hearing than death penalty cases, civil trials, they have to decide liability, compensatory damages, special and general damages, and punitives, if they're applicable, uh, in a, sometimes and usually in a separate hearing uh, with a different burden of proof. So there are lots of complex things that take place in a, in a jury trial.